morning and welcome to Gladstone Camp Meeting 2020. I'm so glad that you found your way to the first program of camp meeting for this year. Now, under normal circumstances, we don't start at 7 a.m. on Tuesday for Gladstone Camp Meeting. But this year is special because we have so much content to bring to you, so many opportunities to connect that we couldn't help but start first thing in the morning today. I'm so glad that you found your way here. And I hope that you will join us over and over and over again throughout the week as we experience the love of God together. Now, I know it's not the same thing to join online as it is to be in this place, in person, with thousands of your closest friends. But I hope that in spite of that disappointment, you will come to the programs and come to the events through your device, through your TV, or through your computer. And I hope that you'll come with a heart that is open and ready to be challenged, to be encouraged, to, to learn in the ways of Jesus as we experience this year's theme, I Serve. Our devotional speaker this morning is Pastor Reginald Richardson, Jr. He is one of the newest pastors here in the Oregon Conference. He's a proud graduate of Oakwood University. He is a, a child of Chicago. He grew up in the Chicagoland area. And he is a young man that is absolutely full of passion. Now, part of his ministry as he serves at the Your Bible Speaks Church is that he's passionate about justice. We recorded his message last week, but he texted me just a day ago and he said, please acknowledge the passing of Representative John Lewis, who was an incredible civil rights activist in this country. He said, I stand on the shoulders of men like him as I advocate for justice in this country as well. Now, you'll hear from Pastor Reginald his passion and his heart for people. I hope that you will enjoy this devotional this morning. Before I hand it over to Pastor Reginald, let's pray. God in heaven, I thank you so much for your presence on this early Tuesday morning. I pray for your blessing on each of us as we hear this message, as we experience your presence through it. Lord, may we sense your heart over this next few minutes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. God bless you. I am just so happy to be able to share today's devotional with you. If you would allow me to take some time today, I would like to explore a concept that God has put on my heart. I do believe that since our theme is I serve, I want to talk more about service. I want to talk about what it means to serve God's people, what it means to talk about serving God's community. I am been so blessed to always go to a Christian school where the concept of service was in the forefront. My academy, Hinsdale Adventist Academy in, in Illinois, our purpose, the purpose of the school, the model of the school, which I'm a proud alumni of, was to prepare students' lives for a life of purpose, service, and leadership. Oh, I'm encouraged because as in my introduction, I am a proud HBCU graduate. I am a proud Oakwood University graduate. And that being said, our motto, our, our creed was simple. It was enter to learn, but to part to serve. Service is something that is deep in the Christian creed, in the Christian mandate, in the Christian way of being. Oh, oftentimes I'm encouraged because when we look in our communities, we see places of service. We see through our health systems, through our community outreach programs, through our preaching, through our lives. Oh, but sometimes I get frustrated when looking at our world, knowing we could do more, that there could be an opportunity to serve better. So today I want to preach a brief sermon, a simple sermon, what service matters. Let us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who hath brought us thus far along the way. Lord, giver of the Imago Dei, Lord, my Father, Lord, my God, Lord of our community and our church, fill this place, fill this time, prepare us for a word from you. Lord, I ask that I decrease, 
Lord, not a word that I say come from me, but, Lord, that the word will come from you on high. Lord, when I'm done and I say my closing appeal, let a life be changed. Lord, it may be early, but, God, you woke up early. We see it in the word. So today we get ready to worship through a word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm encouraged because within our Christian context, we have one of the most important instructions ever given. Go into all the nations, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and making disciples, being the first part, make disciples, baptize, and teach. The Great Commission, we see that Jesus gives before he ascends, before he returns to his Father in heaven. I'm encouraged today because when we think about Jesus and all that he's done for us before he left, he made sure to give us a mission. I'm encouraged because when we look at our current context of situations, when we look at the world as it is right now, we must be active and go. Service is an action word. So is the word go. So when you compare them and you put them together, that tells us that something has to give. Oftentimes, we sit in our holy huddles, we sit in our country club communities and our country club congregations, but yet service is oftentimes just an hour window on a Sabbath morning. Service is oftentimes just a moment of worship where we get our spiritual fix, where we have our holy ecstasy, but we do not encounter a manifestation of God's glory. But today, it's not all doom and gloom from this preacher. It's not all sad and frustration with the church. I'm encouraged because not that long ago, the shift happened. Not too long ago, our church took a step forward that would change the way it looked forever. Oh, I'm encouraged because we shedded the flaky scales of silence and motionlessness. We took an ointment, put ointment on the bed sores of lethargicness, and I promise you that the church has revived its prophetic voice. I'm encouraged because we now are teaching, we, but first we're making disciples. We're going out into the community. I have never seen until recently as a pastor in this church, in the Adventist church, but being a young person who grew up in our communities, I have never seen the church so active, making strides. I am so filled with joy because representation for everybody is happening at such an alarming rate for some people. I'm encouraged because I can stand in this pulpit as a black man from Chicago with comfort and with joy, knowing that there's representation, there's representation all the way in D.C. in the North American Division. I'm encouraged today because when Jesus tells us to do something, we're doing it now. The reason why I get so excited and why I preach with such voice and excitement is because I look at the scriptures. Because when our church steps up, when I look at what God can do for his people, Jesus was a regular guy from Nazareth. Jesus was a regular guy. What good can come out of Nazareth? He was a man who was born in a small town, but yet he came to be king of the world. He left heaven. He casted off all of his divinity, put on humanity to die for the cockroach of the universe, the sinful beings, you and me. So I get excited. I'm sorry I may be loud this morning, but I'm excited because Jesus tells his disciples before leaving, go into all the nations, making disciples. I'm excited because when you make disciples, it is someone who simply subscribes to the teachings of a teacher. For those who, who may be watching and wondering, oh, what does that mean? A disciple is someone who is not necessarily baptized yet. A disciple is not someone who returns a faithful tithe yet. A disciple is someone who said, I heard, and now I'm curious, and I'm going to follow and subscribe to the teachings of this professor or teacher. I love to know that God is still in the disciple-making business. I'm excited because I know my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came into earth 
to transform our situations. I'm excited because I know for a fact that Jesus walked on earth. He walked and he moved in such a way that he allowed the blind to be have their sight again. He moved in such a way that made the woman at the well repent from her ways and drink from the living water. I am excited because the Lord our God, who sits high and looks low and steps into our situation, simply knows that there's nothing that he won't do to save us. I have been blessed with the opportunity just within a month of being a pastor in this conference to already see some amazing things in the act of discipleship. Because first, in order to have disciples, you have to have a teaching. We've been blessed with being given the three angels' message. We've been blessed with the spirit of prophecy who is Jesus Christ. We are blessed with having beliefs and teachings and 20 eight fundamental beliefs that we can stand upon, but there is something special when the church starts to move. I know this may ruffle some feathers, but today I am convinced that our God and King is a God who walked. When I joined the protests, when I saw Pastor Dan Linru and Pastor Garth Dotton and Pastor Gametti, and we walked and other leaders walking alongside the community, something amazing happened. We remarked that where we started we may have had three to 500 people walking with us, but by the end of the day, behind us, there was a great multitude. In front of us, there was a great multitude, and we were moving, going somewhere. See, when we are talking about the context of the word go, God's people must go somewhere. We say that we're going to go to heaven. We say we're going to go to Zion, but until we start marching, until we start moving, we will go nowhere until we activate our feet. We claim to be God's hands and feet. We wonder how we can serve. We have all these things on how, how, how. Today I present to you some easy ways to do it. And they come from the Gospels. I get frustrated sometimes because we overcomplicate Jesus' life and ministry on earth. We try to take it and make it all folksy and take the fangs out of his teachings but he bites into serious situations in our lives. Who are we trying to serve? I've proposed to you two questions. What does service look like, and who are we trying to serve? If someone came to me and said, Pastor Richardson, who are you trying to serve? I believe with all confidence that my job as a pastor of this community, of this church, of the Your Bible Speaks Community Seventh-day Adventist Church, my job is to go and find those who are seeking and don't know they're seeking the love of God. It is my responsibility as a minister of the gospel to go into all the world to make disciples not of myself, not to join my country club community, but to join a community that is active, that moves in such a way that others will start to follow. See, we say we're followers of Jesus, but oftentimes we are observers of him. Oftentimes we wonder, oh, how can we? But it's simple. Jesus went to the woman at the well. He had a plan to go get something to drink, but he knew that there was a mission in that movement. Oh, I'm encouraged because in a time of where we must wonder, how can the church be active in our climate? Oh, come closer, my dear friends and family. It is time for us to start being a Seventh-day Adventist movement again. We've, We've watched the Protestant movements. We watched all these other movements. We watched the Black Lives Matter movement. But where is the Advent movement Where is the church that says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, those who don't care about the more weightier matters of justice and mercy? Where are the people who will stand up for what's right in spite of what happens? See, I'm not angry. I'm excited because I see a movement coming. I see something amazing starting to break free, and it's starting here in the Oregon Conference. I'm excited today because God commands us to move, to go into all the nations. How do we serve? We serve by our ministry of presence. We serve by standing with others who are outside of our traditional ideas and thoughts. I can support you. 
and maybe not agree with everything that you stand for. I can love you, and you could still be my enemy. You could break my heart, but I could still show the compassion of my Savior. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you believe, God can turn it around and make it a way for you to minister. I share this not to brag, but I share this with excitement. If it had not been on June 3, Pastor Gametti, Pastor Dotton, and all the other people like Pastor Dan Linru, our wonderful president, if we weren't there, if the leadership did not organize a protest, a march, I would not have had the pleasure of baptizing an individual we met at the protest. We can serve all we want, but when our service comes with barriers, with caveats, we put a restraint on people who need to see Jesus. God allowed us to show up and be able to now have another member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in response to what happened that day. And because of her testimony, because of her experience, another person will be baptized in the coming weeks. See, when Jesus tells us to go into all the nation making disciples, he acknowledges the infectious nature of his love and mercy. Everybody's wearing masks. Everybody's wearing uh, protective equipment. This is something that I want to transmit. I want to transmit Jesus' love and sacrifice. I want to transmit God's unfailing love and mercy. So when I look at the word, when I look at Matthew chapter 28, um, 28 verse 16 through 20, when I look at it, I see something amazing. I see something amazing, the Great Commission. And this happens when Jesus is about to leave. Jesus is on a mountain with his disciples. They, some worship, but some doubt. And if I, could be, if I could pause parenthetically and share with someone today, it's okay that you don't agree or you may have some doubts. It's okay to have a different opinion from your kids and the generation that may be above you. It's okay to say, I'm not sure. But we should never stand in opposition to someone who needs Jesus. When has the mission of Jesus stopped because of political affiliation? When has the mission of Jesus stopped because I'm from the northern part or I'm from the southern part? I'm from the big city or I'm from the country. Jesus traveled through all these communities and shared a simple message of love, mercy, and compassion. I'm excited today because when I talk about Jesus, he acknowledges the fact that he's been given all authority. So my brothers and sisters who are watching this morning, I want you to know that you, as a follower of Christ, as a baptized member of his community, of his church, of the Seventh-day Adventist church, he also allocates a portion of authority into you. You have the authority to make a difference in your community. But the first thing you have to acknowledge is something that happens in another one of the synoptic gospels. It's a verse that we learn when we're children for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall ever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Why is this so important for us in our context today? For God, for God so loved. God is love. We know that. So the sentence starts off with love. God is love, so God was being himself one day. He was being who he was, that he loved us so much that he sent his son, little love, smaller love, into the world that if we believe in that love, that sacrificial love, that love that walked in the streets covered in manure and garbage and filth, the dirt, that we were made out of, he came to earth and walked along the path with us. Jesus, son of David, 
have mercy. The same one who heard those words and then turned and helped that man crying out. There are people today that are crying out for justice. For Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, justice for Trayvon Martin, justice for all of these people who look like me. People are crying out, asking God, if you are who you say you are, help me, because I can't breathe. Sometimes the weight of stress and sometimes the weight of pain will smother a Christian's voice to the point in which we are unable to breathe. We can relate to that. We can relate as Adventists that one day our voice, our way of life, is being crushed and smothered and will be stopped because we know that Jesus is coming again and we'll cry out, Lord, I can't go to church. But like this a phenomenal Jewish poem says, when they came for this group, I was not a part of it, so I didn't go and be a part of that group. And I'm paraphrasing here. This call for justice, this active ideal of service doesn't just mean we serve in food kitchens, at hospitals, at, 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 at elementary school and high school events. We don't just serve when we go out of the country for mission trips. We serve anytime we're blessed with encountering someone who needs justice. The greatest social justice warrior this world has ever seen, his name was Jesus Christ. He stood in opposition of the Pharisees who said they knew the law, they, they obeyed the law, they knew what, they, what the word said, the word said, but when they encountered the word made flesh, they rejected him because he was not speaking a theology or a perspective that they were comfortable with. I can't help but being a young person, I'm always on the internet and I see different videos and posts and different comments and I and I always just get excited because sometimes if you're doing the right thing people will stand in opposition if you're doing the right thing you're going to have some people who want a gun for your head but I'm encouraged today because Jesus went all the way to Calvary and he fought for us he served he acted in the greatest act of sacrifice this is why the great commission is so important because before he gives this commission He first serves and suffers and dies. So when we, I've addressed how our service looks, going into our community, fighting for others, standing for justice, lifting up, inviting people to encounter Jesus as their Savior and Lord. But I want to address the other question I raised. What does service look like? We've covered that. But how do I serve? This is going to be a little bit harder for some people. Your voice is important. Your voice is valued. Your voice is what God gave you to speak truth to power, to speak, to encourage others. We acknowledge the fact that so many people are afraid to speak, but God gave you the authority. We see it in the Great Commission. It says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. So what does my service look like? How do I do it? I go. First, I go into all the nations. Jonah struggled with going to a nation. Jonah struggled with speaking to a people group that he viewed as the other who he thought was less than. Some say that Jonah was a nationalist. Some would say that Jonah was a bigot. But with that thought process, we also acknowledge that God still uses those who may be contrary to the full extent of God's love and purpose. I'm encouraged because when I look at the the gospel, it says, go into all the nations. So don't be afraid. Have those uncomfortable conversations. Don't be afraid. Be an advocate. Be an ally. Because Jesus served the least of these. I'm concerned because when I look at Matthew, 
chapter 25, verse 35. And we go all the way down and we'll, we'll, we'll briefly look at this portion of the scripture. <coughs> we acknowledge the fact that Jesus is talking about the final judgment. We're looking at how it looks like. And so I want to propose this. Jesus says, when I was sick or when I was in prison, you did not visit me. Right? He says, when I was naked, you did not clothe me. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. And then people will ask, Lord, when were you naked? Lord, when were you in prison? Lord, when were you sick? When were you hungry? And I did not feed you. Truly, I say to you, this is Jesus responding, truly, I say to you, as you have done to one of the least of these, my brother, you have done to me. Today, I, 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 I stop for a moment knowing that the time is drawing nigh for me to close, but I, I am excited because we no longer have to fear as long as we are fighting for the least of these. The least of these. We address them. They're members of communities that we may not necessarily view as valued, but God sees them as their own. So when we serve, when we have these uncomfortable conversations, when it's us time to serve, when it's us being active, yes, mission trips are great. Serving as a missionary is great. But truthfully, we have work to be done here. We have enough missionaries out there. It's time to put some missionaries in our communities. Downtown Portland needs some missionaries. They don't just need churches. They need missionaries, people on a mission to make disciples, to expose them to the love of Christ, that churches do care about things like Black Lives Matter, that churches do care about things like justice and equality and the value of lives of those who are members of the LGBTQ community. Yes, I said it. There are people who are in our church who are part of these groups, who are members of these things, and who need our help and need to know that we stand with them because they acknowledge that Jesus is their Savior and Lord. There are people who are in desperate need of healing and help. And if we stand on the side of judgment of the least of these, we will be told, I knew you not. And for me and my house, for me and my people, my church, we will not be told by God, I knew you not. And that is my prayer today, that in our service, we would be allies and advocates and servants, dare I even say slaves to Christ, thus that would transform our lives and make things happen on earth. When we stand for the least of these, our great commission makes a little bit more sense. Go into all the nations, all the groups, all the communities. That means go into the communities of the least of these. And because of our love and our service, not just food baskets, not just clean socks, not just a hashtag and a retweet, not just a moment in time, but when we as a church decide that we will serve everyone regardless of color, gender, orientation, economic status, marital status, weight, height, when we acknowledge the value of each and every person that God has given the Imago Dei, the image of God, when we acknowledge people for who they are and the way that God sent them to us, we got to stop converting people before we say hello. We got to stop converting people and telling them about the 28 fundamental beliefs before they even walk into our doors. We can't just lead with that. We have to lead with love. Service. Look at the letters. Service. Service is a word. Service is a word 
But I like to see service must come first with love. That's the reason why that the conference has gone through loving others and all these things and all broke it down for such a time as this. It was intentional. It was the Holy Spirit. But so when we go into all the nations and we baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, here's where Adventism can thrive. You ready? This is where we can thrive because we got a lot, 28 of them. We got 28 teachings, including all the beautiful writings of Ellen White, who we love so dearly. But more importantly, we have the Bible, our great example. We have Jesus, our high priest, our king, our Lord. Teach them to obey all that I, we're talking about Jesus now, have commanded thee. So now we can talk about the 28 fundamental beliefs. We can talk about the things that that we need, that Jesus needs us to share. But because we started with love as our founding principle, because we started with love as our guiding light, because we started with love, who is God, they can meet him. It is important for us to be a church that starts our services, our service, our action with love. Since when has love become so taboo? Since when did love become so political? When has love become a problem? Well, I, refor- I regret to inform you that love has always been a problem. Because when love became a man, the enemy wanted to snuff it out. When love was a principle in heaven, someone wanted to jack it up. Oh, but because of love, because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we have hope. We sing this wonderful song, we have this hope that burns within our heart, hope in the coming of the Lord. And I stand here before you today to sing a new song. Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, I lift my hands in total adoration unto thee. Why do we sing these songs? Because of love. So I've shared these questions. I've shared these points of view. I've shared this. Now it's time for action. The same way that we mobilized in June to say that, in fact, black lives matter. The same way that we stand in support of those who are oppressed and those who remain in detention centers on our southern border. Thank God that Egypt didn't have a policy to detain families because Mary and Joseph would have had a different story. Jesus' story would have been a little bit different if the enemy was able to detain him on Egypt's border. But I'm so glad that this person of color from, from Nazareth, this king of kings and lords of lords, is coming soon. See, this message is not just about the fact that Jesus stands for justice, but, oh, I know that our Bible tells us Babylon has fallen, Babylon has fallen. I'm encouraged today because as I close, I know the Great Commission. I know how the story ends because he says, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the age, but Oh, I'm so happy that Jesus Christ, our Lord and our King, is coming soon. I don't know who may be watching this. I don't know when you're watching this, but I want you to know that Jesus is coming soon. We know that Revelation gives us a three angels message. We know that it first tells us that they saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, carrying an everlasting gospel, saying to all those who dwell on the earth, Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of judgment has come. And worship him who made the seas and the heavens. Oh, but I'm also excited that there was another angel who said Babylon has fallen. Babylon has fallen. That great city. Oh, I'm excited because when Jesus shows up, it is evident and proof that the Babylons of earth, Babylons and governments and issues that we find ourselves will crumble. Babylon's just not Babylon of the Bible, it's Babylon, anything that stands in opposition to detain God's people. So today there are things that we experience that hold and break the backs of God's people, but I've come to tell someone today that Babylon has fallen, 
Babylon has fallen, and God, our king, is coming soon. So don't just be standing there idly by when he says to you, go serve somebody. Don't stand idly by when someone asks, what can I do? When what someone asks the question, what must I do to be saved? I say, go serve. Go out and all to the world, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Go, ye therefore, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Don't just sit there, start to serve. I'm encouraged today, and as I close and take my seat, I am assured that if we do the right thing for the right reasons, there will be no backlash. And if there is, if God be for me, who can stand against me? If there's an issue, God's got it. It's his check. He'll sign it. If it's an issue that you're experiencing, God will provide, period. I'm encouraged today that God has been so good that he stood by and couldn't just sit there and say, I'll just make a new one. When I was lost, sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shores, oh, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more, but, oh, but the master, Jesus, son of David, oh, but the master of the seas, heard my despairing cry. Oh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Today I've come to share a brief word that's simple. Go into all the world. In spite of our ideologies and perspectives, go into all the world, despite how much it may cost. Go into all the world and see the world is not outside of the contiguous United States of America. The world is right outside these campground land. Oh, the world is just not that far down I-5. The world is not that far down south. The world is there waiting for someone to declare Jesus, to return sight to the blind, resurrection of the dead, and the soon coming of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. So I close with this. I come out of the word with this. If there's an issue, take it up with Jesus. But what I will tell you this today, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. If the giver of life, the maker of man, could step out of his divinity and put on humanity's garbage, stay and not sin, we can go out of our country club, holy huddles, and step into the world and stand for what is right, no matter what the financial, social, political cost. We serve a great God who is loving and willing to be there for us. So I want to invite anyone who may be watching this through any of our different stream, the different streams that camp meeting in this devotional period may go. But I want to just say to someone who's watching who just stumbled across the fact that there is something happening and you, the Lord put this video in front of you, you are loved by God. No matter what you've heard, no matter what you've seen, Jesus loves you. He's died for you. He wants you in his family. So right now, person to person, I want to tell you that no matter what you're going through, there is a God who loves you more than you can imagine. If he could save me, he can save anybody. I'm not saying that to get you into one of our churches. I'm not saying that to get you to return a faithful tithe and offering. I'm getting you to, I want you to know maybe this is the first time and the last time you'll hear this, but God loves you and he sent his son to die for you. And because of that sacrifice, if you accept him, if you accept him as personal Savior and Lord, he is faithful and you confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive them and cleanse, them, cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So at the conclusion of this prayer, I'm going to be confident that someone's chain has been broken today. Someone has a better idea what service looks like, the movement, the active push to make a difference. But also through our Christian context, our Seventh-day Adventist world lens, that someone's life can be changed. Today, I believe that the Oakwood University motto stands strong. We've entered to learn today. Now it's time for us to depart to serve. Father God, in the name of Jesus, the one who is to come, I ask you right now 
that someone who has been just wading deep in pain and suffering, that God, you would not just let them sit there any longer, Lord. Send the lifeboat of Jesus. Lord, they watched this program today and their lives have been changed because they realized that God is a God of service but also is a God of justice. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, search our hearts. Remove any wicked way in us. So, Lord, when we come to the end of another camp meeting, we won't be able to say, man, digital was great. No, Lord, that we would be able to say, truly, truly, the Holy Spirit had come by here. Lord, if there's someone who's watching who's heard of this program and is just wondering what they can do to be a part of your body, Lord, right now I pray in the name of Jesus that you would seal their decisions, that they would reach out to one of their local churches wherever they may be and that they would come into fellowship with you, Lord. Lord, we know you've given the great commission to go into all the world teaching them, making disciples. And then, Lord, as they have seen what the Lord can do today and they become disciples, Lord, allow us to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But, Lord, also allow us to teach with love and service in mind. So, Lord, let nothing that was said today just be about a young preacher, but, Lord, let it be about what you're going to do in our community going forward. Lord, thank you for your love and mercy. We ask all these things in Jesus' name we do pray. And we all said through our phones, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Reginald, for your message and for sharing your heart with us to kick off our camp meeting. Now, I think you probably have enough time for breakfast. In just a little while at 9 a.m., we're going to experience our first general session with Pastor Sung Kwan from the NAD. I hope that you'll be back right here to join us for that live presentation. And by the way, make sure that you have access to a platform, either YouTube or Facebook, where you can comment in and ask questions in a virtual dialogue with Pastor Kwan. So hope to see you at 9 a.m. right back in this spot. God bless you.